property patriot. You are cleared hot. Welcome to the Game High Podcast. I'm your host, Bud Evans. Today we chat with Lindsay Sharma. She's an innovative real estate investor. Lindsay shares her journey from graphic design to real estate, harnessing her entrepreneurial spirit to overcome challenges and build a thriving business. Key takeaways for today include leveraging wholesaling for portfolio growth, the importance of maintaining a balance between reinvestment and personal income, and strategic marketing in real estate for lead generation. So let's dive in for insights on transforming financial adversity into opportunity, where we provide real estate investors with the tools to achieve generational wealth. This is the Aim High Podcast, show number 66. Hello, and welcome to the Aim High Podcast. I'm your host, Bud Evans, and today I'm here with Lindsay Sharma. Hi, Lindsay. How are you? Hey, Bud. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. Listen, we had a conversation before this, but can you do me a favor, please, and just give me a quick introduction? Sure. So I'm currently a real estate investor. I have my own business, been in business for about a year. Prior to that, I worked for another real estate investor in my local market where I learned sort of the ins and outs of the business. You've been doing this for about a year. How many properties do you have right now? So my main strategy is wholesaling, but I also keep some properties in my portfolio with the long-term goal of having cash flow for retirement and living expenses. So right now I have seven properties in my portfolio. Awesome. So you're using the wholesaling money to increase the portfolio or use, are you living off the wholesale? A little bit of both. Yep. And then there's wholesaling. A lot of people don't know, but it's more or less a marketing business in a way. So it can be, your overhead can really rack up quickly because the name of the game is just really bringing in a ton of leads. And obviously to get a ton of leads, you need to send out a lot of marketing. Yeah. And also pays for itself. <laughs> right. It's yeah. uh, um, counterintuitive that you're investing money, right? I won't call it spend money to make money because I don't like that phrase, but you're investing money with an expected return on investment. And if you're putting out $10,000 a month, but you're making $100,000 a month, it's not really that big a deal, right? Absolutely. So how did you get into real estate? Yeah, so I grew up in the Midwest. I'm from Toledo, Ohio. And I grew up in a middle-class family. My parents worked very hard. Sometimes my dad had multiple jobs just to make sure we had everything we needed. And anyone who knows anything about that part of the Midwest, Northwest Ohio, Southeast Michigan, it was hit very hard by the decline of the auto industry. So I grew up around that when that was really taking place. A lot of families really suffered a lot. So that kind of influenced my mindset and, and what I wanted to get out of life. I was fortunate enough to go to college. I got a college degree in graphic design. And then I graduated in 2007. And of course, 2008, we had the financial crisis. And I just had a really difficult time finding a job in my field. And I had to patch together some different jobs, sort of job topped for a while. And at the same time, I was freelancing, doing design work and building up my skills that way. I did own a graphic design business for a few years. I was doing that on my own. So that was my first introduction to entrepreneurship. And it was very difficult for me. I really struggled because I didn't educate myself on business. I was pretty much just, it was just, I was owning a job for myself, pretty much. I was just doing design work. I wasn't strategic about it. And... So as I was struggling, I was trying to figure out better ways or extra ways to bring in money for my business. And I started really reading a lot of books about finances, about building wealth, about business. And I started learning about passive income. And I dabbled with that a little bit in the design world by creating, I would create resume templates and sell them online. I would create the template once and then it would just sell over and over again. I really didn't have to do much after the initial um, setup. So I thought, you know, there's really something to this, but I want to do it on a bigger scale. So I started learning about real estate and real estate investing. I was listening to podcasts and reading books, but I still just didn't know what the heck do I do to get started. So I thought, what if I find a job working for somebody who's already doing this and then I can work under them and learn everything 
That's exactly what I did. I was lucky enough to get a job with a local investor and I was his administrative assistant. So I was involved in every part of the business, which was really, really great to just learn so much from him. And, and after working together for a couple of years, I had actually started, I got my first deal while working for him. And then over time, I was ready just to go off on my own, start my own business. Great. I got to ask you though, because here you are, you're getting hit with the auto industry decline. Then you're immediately coming out and you're finding yourself in the middle of a financial disaster. That, that had to put you into a scarcity mindset. Was it working for the other person that kind of got you into the thought that like, hey, I'm going to go out and do this? Or was it something else? It was. So I think the scarcity mindset really pushed me to want to create a better financial future for myself. I looked at what was going on in the economy, what was going on with the middle class in America, the decline of the middle class. And I thought, I don't want to be the one falling behind. I'd rather be the one who has access to resources, owns assets. So that was, I was developing that, I think, just from a young age, seeing what I saw. That's great. You're, so th this first deal, what did it look like? Sure. So th the guy who was working for, his name is Justin. And when I started working with him, I was very clear and upfront and transparent that, hey, I want to invest in real estate someday myself. That's my big goal. And so over time, he, he opened it up to me. He said, if you want to start working leads in our system, talking to sellers, go ahead and do so. So I did. I started getting on the phone, cold calling a bunch of people, working old leads in the system. And my first deal ended up being a vacant old mobile home on about a quarter and a half of land. It was in the outskirts of Little Rock, but it was still a community that had a, cool, a good school system, higher demand area. And I, purchased, I got that home under contract, I want to say for about $15,000, somewhere around there. And I ended up selling it with owner financing. So I was the bank financing it to a family. They bought it because they wanted their own land and they were going to fix up the mobile home. I sold it on a note for $50,000. Oh, wow. And you didn't do any rehab to it at all? No, I didn't do anything to it. That's incredible. Wow. Okay. Fantastic. That's, that's pretty impressive. And Listen, I'll look at it this way. There's a little altruism behind it too, because not only are you making a little bit of money on it, but you're helping somebody else out who may not have qualified to buy a house, right? Yeah, absolutely. The family that I sold it to, they were so excited because of the school district it was in. They loved that they had a big, big lot, privacy from neighbors, and they were self-employed. So they were self-employed and they wouldn't have qualified for bank loan. And then, of course, on a property at that price point, it's a lower price point. It's really hard to get any kind of loan on something like that, especially something that's a fixer-upper and a mobile home. Mobile homes, a whole nother game as far as lending goes as well. Yeah. yeah. We had uh, Andrew Smood on here, who's, dude's incredible. And he's, or Adrian, sorry, Adrian Smood, who's on here, who was absolutely incredible. And he was talking about that. And at a certain point, like banks just won't even talk to you if, if for mobile homes or oh, well, it's be before this year. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. How did you progress after the mobile home? Do you get into so single family homes or? Yeah, I'm, I still started buying. I have a few single family homes and I do still have a few mobile homes. I actually really am trying to stick to the mobile home niche for my portfolio because of the owner financing, and there's just a large demand in the area that I'm investing in. And the price points are much lower than single families, which I really like because my spreads can be higher and then my, you know, my money can go further with what I'm investing in. With that, is that your local market? Or you said Little Rock. Are we talking about Arkansas? Yes. I lived when I I moved from Toledo in my late 20s and I relocated Little Rock, Arkansas because my sisters, both of my sisters moved there. One had moved for a job and the other one moved there. And then I said, guess what? I'm done with this snow and cold in the Midwest. 
And I also moved there and I lived there for about 10 years. And so that's where I worked for the investor. I learned the Little Rock market. I recently have relocated to Florida. I live in Central Florida now, but I still invest in Central Arkansas. That's where my properties are. That's where my business runs. So I've got to ask you, because I know that there are going to be questions later on about this, but directed at me, but because I am also a a long distance investor. So how do you keep your investments coming in? How are you sourcing your deals? How are you doing the rehab from a distance from Central Florida out to Little Rock? Sure. So I do have a team. I think that's really important. I do have an acquisition person who lives in Little Rock. And I actually have another one who lives in Toledo, Ohio, where I grew up because I was dabbling in that market a little bit and decided, actually, I I decided not to pursue it because I was testing it out and it didn't really work out. But so I have a team there that helps a lot, especially if I need to send somebody to a property. Um, I'm also looking to actually, so my portfolio has, I have a few rentals and then most of them are notes. With the notes, I don't really have to do anything besides service the loan, and I outsource that to a loan service company. Once in a while, I might get a random call about something, but it's not usually related to the property because the borrower, they're responsible for the maintenance, they're responsible for everything. But for my rentals, I'm starting to get more rentals, and I'm looking to hire a property management company to manage them for me because, you know, once you get to a certain, I guess, you know, as you get more in your portfolio, it gets a little harder to self-manage. And I really don't want to be a business of property management anyways. It's for, and back to your question about marketing and how do I find my leads? I actually pull lists. Some of those lists I gather using a VA, like I target probate leads, tax delinquent leads, code violation. So I have a VA helping me pull those leads. Also, Mm -hmm. sometimes I'll get lists off corrupt stream and then I'm sending them direct mail every single month. And that's primarily how I got, get all my leads. Yes, but what are your returns like? What percentage of mailers are actually getting answered? The percent, the percentage is still a little low. I would say it's like a one, maybe a 1%, one and a half percent response rate. It still works and it, it's still very cost effective. I did dabble. I did tell you I've only been in a business for about a year. So I'm still a new business. And in my first year, you know, I got really excited and I was trying to scale really quickly because I thought, hey, I have three years in this business. I've seen the blueprint. I know this market. I thought, <laughs> I want to go full speed ahead. So um, I moved very quickly and early on, I invested a lot in marketing and I did cold calling, direct mail. And also I had a marketing company managing Facebook ads for me because I just don't, I'm not really an expert in that area. And I was getting, I was getting decent ROI, but I, my team was not really set up well to handle all the leads and we got to a point where we had nine properties under contract at once and it just got a little, our team just wasn't really equipped to handle that volume yet. Mm -hmm. And also, of course, being a new business owner there, I made a ton of mistakes and there were a lot of system and process issues that needed to be addressed. So I learned that the hard way. And then I had to scale back, cut out some marketing channels. And this year for 2024, I'm really focusing on getting, building a very strong team, very well-trained team, getting the right people in the right spots, and also um, working on, you know, enhancing some of the systems and processes we already have in place to get things running a little bit smoother and focusing more on profit. That's awesome. You're scaling and growing your team as you're progressing through. And that's fantastic. Good for you. Is that like the current deal? Is that the direction you guys are going to go? We're just going to scale and keep doing what we're doing? Or do you have anything on the horizon that you're looking forward to? Sure. So as I continue to wholesale and grow my portfolio, I've been recently learning a lot about mobile home park. Mm -hmm. And Again, I'm familiar with the mobile homes. 
mine are usually on land. I buy mobile homes on land, usually in acres or more, trying to buy more of those rural properties. I don't really deal inside mobile home parks, but I thought if I'm trying to invest for cash flow, buying property by property is just a long game. It takes a long time and, and it's great. I'm still going to continue to do that. But now I'm just really trying to learn, learn more about mobile home park investing and network with people who already own mobile home parks. So that's my big goal for the future. Great. And now, what is the one thing that you've learned through this entire process? What's the one thing, the takeaway that you can give that really happened as your wealth started to increase? I think one thing I've started to learn is as you increase your wealth, you can start to buy back your time. And for me, that's really important. Anyone who's an entrepreneur or who started a business knows early on there's a lot of sweat equity. Equity, a lot of time, a lot of stretch you had to pour into your business before you can get to a point where you start hiring people, start outsourcing things and step away from the business where you're working on it more so than in it. And so I, the more that I've been able to systemize things, outsource things, I can increase my revenue and also use my time on higher revenue generating activities or for more family time, things of that nature. And that's extremely important to me. That's really the the only reason why I'm a real estate investor, because I want freedom over my time. The end game, isn't it? Just yeah. let everybody else do everything for you so I can just hang out here or go to the beach. Yeah. Absolutely. Operate an entire business off your cell phone. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. All right. Lindsay. Thank you very much for all that. We're going to go into the soaring four. These are the same four questions that I ask every guest who can help someone who is just starting out achieve new heights. So question number one is, what do you use to keep yourself motivated? Well, things. I would say number one is just taking care of myself, making sure I get enough rest and exercise. I exercise five days a week and I have three kids, <laughs> four and under. So that's not always easy, but I know that if I'm not taking care of myself or my body, I'm not going to perform. I'm not going to have the energy to get done. Another would be just, you know, managing my mindset. I read my goals every single day and then I have a vision board on Pinterest. I look at that every single day. And third would just be constant learning. I'm always reading new books, listening to podcasts, also invest in coaching. I have a one-on-one coach. Excellent. Recommend that to everybody, by the way. I have one myself. So what is one thing that you learned that completely changed your mindset? Recently read the book, and I know a lot of investors have read this book, Who Not How. And um, the principle of leveraging other people instead of trying to learn everything yourself has just really um, made such a positive impact on myself and my business. And I'm an introvert. I'm a creative at heart. I like to do things by myself. So that was a really hard lesson for me to learn, but very necessary. What tools do you use to keep you on track? One of them, I don't know if it's so much a tool or it's more of a system, but profit first. I work with a fractional CFO and I use the profit first system to manage my cash flow in my business. That really helps take some of the pressure off because I know a lot of real estate investors still have um, cash crunches in running their businesses. So um, that and then some other tools I really like. um, Calendly just keeps my team, myself on track. um, And then our CRM, which we use FreedomSoft. Nice. And then what is one thing that you would change, if anything, that when if you had to start all over again? Touched on this earlier, but I would focus more on profit before scaling and also building the right team and investing more in my team's training and being a leader the hard way. I was a little too hands off and you have to manage your team or, and you can get to a point where you can hire somebody to manage your team for you. But right now I'm in that spot and 
I wasn't really doing the bench job. So that's a big focus for me this year. Lindsay, if somebody wanted to reach out to you, how would they do that? You can go to my website. It's lindsaysharmaproperties.com. And I spell my name L-I-N-D-S-A-Y. Probably the best way to reach me. Hey, Lindsay, I really do thank you for your time today. Thank you for the insights that you provided and the insight on the mobile homes in, uh, in Little Rock. It's fantastic. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. It's an absolute pleasure. Thanks for being a part of the Aim High community. Your support drives us to create valuable content, and we can't wait to see your success stories in real estate investing. Till next time, aim high, never stop learning. Bud Evans, signing off. We'll see you soon.